So you want to learn how to create AI agents, then this video is for you. I'm going to provide you a complete roadmap that I would follow if I were to start over my AI agent development journey today. For context, I have been on this journey coding all sorts of agents for about four years now, earning nearly $300,000 and being featured on Business Insider for my work. So when I say I know a thing or two about building AI agents, I mean it. But before we get into the seven steps of creating the best possible agents and earning five figures a month from it, why should you even learn this? Like, why care? Well, listen to this. I think we're going to live in a world where there are going to be hundreds of millions of billions of different AI agents. I think that every business in the future, just like they have an email address and a website and a social media presence today, I think every business is going to have an AI agent that their customers can talk to in the future. It's real. The hype is real. AI agents have been printing developers money with some developers starting entire companies revolving around a single AI agent that can do a task. From YC to venture capital firms, all the investors are throwing money at these AI agent startups because they're all having FOMO. They all want to get in on this hype. When you have every tech CEO talking about it, of course, the investors at these big companies are gonna be like, hmm, maybe I want someone to create AI agents for me. I wanna invest in an AI agent that's gonna make me millions. And as this growing trend of AI agents is looming, a lot of people are getting scared that their jobs are gonna be replaced. And the harsh reality is that's true. And the ones who actually adapt to this and learn how to create these agents that are gonna replace these jobs, they're the ones who are going to forever be employed and still have an ability to make a large sum of money every single month. Because, hey, your job can't be replaced if you're the one creating the agents. And even if you don't want to learn how to make agents to earn money, you can use it for your own needs. For example, you can use an agent to book your next trip to the Maldives all for you. You can use an agent to plan your entire week through Google Calendar. You can literally use an agent for anything on the internet. But with all this hype, there's a lot of confusion. People think that any tool that can automate something is automatically an AI agent when this is not true. So let's clear this up. There are two real types of agents. You have AI agents and then you have web agents. So what is the difference? A web agent is any tool that automates something on a website, right? This can be such as buying an item off of a store like Nike or booking a shift off some shift booking website or you know checking the weather even. These are all web agents, they don't necessarily have to use AI. While AI agents use some sort of LLM like you know GPT-40 or DeepSeek to make educated decisions and do educated operations that would need human reasoning or human logic. So here's a quick example. Let's say you are a YouTuber and you write your YouTube video script. Now you want to maybe create this into a LinkedIn post just because of you know, you're trying to grow your personal brand. So in this case, yes, you can readapt your script and write out a new LinkedIn post based off of it, which will take you maybe 30 minutes to an hour, or you could have an AI agent do it for you. You can literally give your agent the script. The AI agent will have to use some sort of reasoning and like smart thinking to create a LinkedIn style post and then go ahead and post it. This is an AI agent. It requires an LLM like GPT to make you know this smart text that looks like a real LinkedIn post and feels like a human wrote it. While a web agent wouldn't do anything like that. In fact, a web agent would just maybe get the YouTube video and just post it on a LinkedIn post. That's it with no text. So again, the main difference is AI agents, you need an LLM, web agents, you don't. But despite there being a difference, there can be AI agents that have web agentic capabilities within them. For example, the posting on LinkedIn, this is something that can be done through a web agent. So while the text may be generated with the AI part, the actual posting can be done through pure web automation. And usually this combination of web agent, AI agent is just called AI agent. Uh, at the end of the day, AI agents are just the biggest trendy word possible. So when people talk about agents, they just automatically refer to AI agents. So what are some common misconceptions about agents? Number one is they're illegal. They're not illegal. Agents are not illegal. In fact, the only type of agent that is illegal in the United States are ticket bots. They're actually banned under the Obama administration. So do not make a ticket bot. I know you wanna to go to that Taylor Swift concert. Sorry, you can't. And another common misconception is that you have to be a super giga chat tech nerd, Elon Musk's third son to know how to create an agent. No, they're actually very simple. In fact, a lot of tools to create these agents are are no code drag and drop tools. So you can literally not be a programmer and create some pretty sick agents. And later in the video, I want to tell you the exact platform that you can use to make these agents. Now on the flip side, when you're making web-based agents, you will have to know how to code because again, you're using pure web automation. So you're using JavaScript, HTML, uh, Tailwind CSS, Node.js. These are languages of the web that somehow interact with it or literally are used to create a website. 
So you need to know this code, like the back of your hand, if you're going to create a successful web agent. With AI agents, you don't. There are so many tools like VoiceFlow, ManyChat, that creators, coaches are all using to automate their DMs or automate their websites messaging all through these platforms that are just literally drag and drop and you're able to create some very powerful AI agents. So while you have this heavy code based approach and this low code approach, people are usually questioning like, which approach should you follow? So my approach is simple. I like to combine my knowledge of web agents and AI agents. Yes, sometimes when there's a complex web task, you're going to need to know the languages of the web, like JavaScript, HTML, Node.js, to make a successful web agent. And if you don't, your web agent is going to suck and you're probably going to make nothing and might even crash. And on the flip side, when a client wants me to create a very simple AI agent, then I would just use a no code tool, right? It all really depends on the task and I like to keep it as minimal as possible. If I don't need to code, I won't. All right, and that's the approach I recommend. If you guys don't need to know how to code to do something, then don't learn how to code for it. All right, there's no point. Just use the drag and drop tools. But if there is something that is requiring you to like maybe you know scrape something off of some website and it can only be done by like PubTerJS, which is a web automation library, then in that case you should you know pick up the thinking hat and learn how to code. And in fact, coding is such a number one skill in 2025 that you matter of fact learn it at any time you possibly have. So I highly recommend just learning how to code because it's going to just make you more of an ultimate weapon. Now, with all this being said, what are the actual steps to learning how to build agents successfully this year? So starting off is literally getting started. You need to make sure you have a proper coding platform in the case you need to actually code. So the IDE I use is Visual Studio Code. It's literally what every developer uses at my corporate job. Everyone loves it. In fact, I think it's the most heavily used IDE today. Another great tool that can be directly incorporated in Visual Studio Code is GitHub Copilot. This is like an AI coding assistant. Uh, you may have heard of Cursor.ai. This is another tool that's like Copilot. They're basically AI assistants that can help you while you're coding. You can auto-complete code. They, you can literally tell it to write the code for you and it will. And it just speeds up your development skills and development like process as a programmer. Everyone in my corporate job uses this. Like you're actually required to use it because of how good it is. If you're a developer in 2025, there's absolutely no reason you do not have Cursor AI or Copilot helping you out. And now if you are heavily focused on the AI agents, then you need to know how to use VoiceFlow and N8N. These are two drag and drop, no code platforms that can allow you to create very powerful AI conversational agents, voice AI, and some general use AI agents. I personally use VoiceFlow when it comes to chatbots and I use N8N when it comes to everything else. So uh, I like N8N more. And now again, back to the coding libraries, you need to know how to code in Node.js as well as some very key libraries that Node.js supports, such as Puppeteer.js. Puppeteer.js is the most famous web automation framework out there. It literally lets you control a browser like with your code and you can act like a real human on any website. Top developers use this. I personally have been using it for the last four years and my entire mentorship where I teach other people how to create these agents, I teach them PuppeteerJS just because of how powerful it is. Another uh, competitor to PuppeteerJS is Playwright. I know uh, it's used a lot when it comes to corporate software engineering jobs. Playwright is just more professional, I like to say. Uh, I just been used to using PuppeteerJS for the past four years, so I am biased when I say I rather use PuppeteerJS, but Playwright is another web automation library that has a lot of support, a a lot of you know people you can go to in like an open source community to ask questions. Similar to Puppeteer, right? They both have that, that big community supporting it. So whichever one you like more, just try using that. But if you want my help, use Puppeteer because I can literally carry you with that. The next thing you gotta do is learn GitHub. GitHub is the ultimate version control tool where you can basically make sure that if you accidentally crash your code and absolutely destroy everything, you have backups. It is a necessity for any developer to make sure they have their own GitHub account as well as their own private repository where you can push all of your projects into this private repo, kind of turning into like a portfolio of all your work. The common Git commands are push, pull, fetch. You should learn all of these. You should become a master at GitHub basics. So while you don't have to be a master at GitHub in general, even I'm not, you should know at least the basics of it. So that way you can, you know, turn your GitHub account into a portfolio that you can show recruiters, other developers. So that way they know that, hey, this guy actually knows what he's doing. 
Like he's actually kind of smart. Another key benefit is a lot of open source code is on GitHub. DeepSeek can literally be found on GitHub and you can use the very code that DeepSeek uses in your own projects. So if you want to access these repos and you want to be able to clone these repos and, and use them for your own personal projects, you kind of got to know how to use GitHub. So you matter of fact, learn it. And there are a ton of free videos on YouTube. Like literally you're probably a 10 minute video away from becoming a master at GitHub basics. So don't think it's some huge technology that's going to take you hours to learn. No, it's very, very straightforward. I think it took me about like six minutes when I first learned about GitHub to master it. So once all this groundwork is done, it's time for you to work on real projects. Working on real projects is extremely important if you truly want to create money-making products. Yes, you can build a simple automation program that goes to weather.com and gives you the latest report for the weather. Who's actually gonna spend money on that and buy that from you? No one. You need to create projects that have real meaning to them. Now you might ask me, okay, Ritesh, you can say all that, but how on earth do I even think of these projects that you know have real meaning? Good question. I recommend going to Product Hunt and looking at some of the top products of the week for the last four weeks. Try to recreate any of these products, but just a much simpler version, like literally create the Walmart version of any of the top products. This way you are building something that you already know has meaning if it's one of the top products of the week. And by building your own version of it, maybe with a unique twist, you can kind of sell it as your own product. And don't think you're cheating or this is like a, some horrible scummy thing to do. In fact, a lot of people go to Product Hunt and these platforms that that, you know, release tech products on the daily for inspiration. And they sometimes they just make exact copies, the exact same product with like a little twist. And that is a developer world for you. It's, it's not cheating. This is literally what developers do. I mean, we saw Snapchat stories. Now we see Instagram stories. Now we see TikTok stories. So everyone is doing it. Another key benefit of working on real projects is it will make your GitHub portfolio look that much more stellar in case you want to show it to a recruiter so you can land a full-time job as an AI engineer and make serious money. Of course, this is your call. After you create these meaningful projects, I recommend creating your first AI agent for customers. Yes, you're about to make money. See, by having all this experience that you gather through building real projects, you're able to create AI agents that can actually help someone and you can charge that person for helping them. In this video right here, I go in depth on how to build, sell, and market your AI agent for profit. So be sure to check that out after this video. Look, there's no better learning experience than creating AI agent for a customer, them yelling at you, then giving you feedback and you have to improve it to make it the ultimate AI agent that can do whatever task you want it to do. And yes, it's not not easy, but it's very doable. In fact, if you look at some of the top products on Product Hunt, they're mostly AI agents. Uh, sometimes there might be assistance for, you know, making your emails better or other code assistant, but they're all very easy to create. Like they're pretty simple actually. And as you learn these platforms like N8N and you learn Node.js, you're going to see that, wait, this top product of the week, I can make this in a weekend. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. So what I personally would do with all these potential agents that you know can do so many tasks, if I had to pick one niche, I would focus on voice AI agents. Voice AI agents are the new hot trend that's as hot as TV selling out on Black Friday. Imagine talking to an AI to book an appointment at your doctor office and you don't even realize it. Now imagine you're the doctor who's using the AI agent to, instead of a receptionist to take on these, these calls. So now you don't have to pay a receptionist and you are free yourself and you can focus on you know, being a doctor and saving lives. And now imagine you're the person who's creating these AI agents, selling to the doctor, saving them money and time, and how much money you can make off of that. You're selling to a doctor. You can probably charge that doctor $5,000 for using your voice AI agent, like as a one-time fee. And I say 5,000, cause this is a real price. A lot of voice AI agent agencies sell their voice AI agents for. And the best part, you're actually helping a doctor make their life easier. So you're kind of saving lives cause the doctor is saving lives and you're saving the doctor's life. I mean, you're, you're a hero. So now do you see the potential of creating a voice AI agent and why I highly recommend if you were to create your first agent today, that's the route you should go. Obviously it's up to you. There's a ton of possibilities guys, like a ton. I just like the idea of voice AI agents because I think it's very, very cool. And it'll turn into money printing machine. So while you're creating all these projects, it's, it's very easy to get swept away and like, yo, I'm making so much money off of this. I'm good. Like I don't need to learn anymore. That's, that's wrong. You need to continue to learn. You see AI is like, 
like developing at such a rapid rate that the AI you knew about last week is outdated because of even better AI technologies released the same week that's better than the technology that was released last week. And that's how fast this space is moving. The other day I saw an AI that can take a picture and animate it into a video. That's absolutely crazy. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest AI news, I highly recommend following these two Instagram accounts and signing up for my newsletter where I cover the hottest AI trends. And as you stay up to date with all these AI trends, your creativity will be at an all time high because you'll be like, wait, I used to think this was impossible, but now I know it's possible. And because I know it's possible, I can create an AI agent that can automate the entire process and sell this to people. All of a sudden you'll be creating AI agents for use cases that you didn't even know could exist. You can literally make an AI agent that can make movies of Spider-Man fighting Superman. Like it's actually possible in today's age. And as you create more and more of these absolutely ridiculous AI agents, you're going to be building what I call an AI agent army. Yes, an army of AI agents. It's like the Terminator on steroids. And this is where the real magic happens. You can create AI agents that can manage other AI agents and monitor their work, review it, and make sure it's up to your standards. There's a ton of videos on YouTube showcasing exactly what I'm saying using the no code platform NADN. See, eventually you might even create AI agents that create other AI agents, and that's when the world's actually gonna end. That's when we humans will no longer be needed. But the potential of this is pretty insane. See, Sam Altman recently said this. And what this means is that your business back in the day, maybe like a year or three years ago would you know need setters closers a receptionist right all these other filler positions to take care of certain tasks but now these very same tasks can be handled by an ai agent your receptionist can be replaced by a voice ai agent your closer can also be replaced by a voice ai agent a lot of these key positions at companies can now be replaced and this is literally why people are losing their jobs because it's just not needed anymore and while that does suck you have to adapt and learn how to use ai agents to your advantage so by creating these AI agents that are now filling these job positions, you're able to scale your side hustle, your company to a multi-million dollar company with just yourself. And this is possible if you know how to build these agents. It's almost like these agents are your minions and they're doing all your work and you just got maybe work like two or three hours a day. And that's nuts. Like to work two, three hours a day and you have just AI agents doing everything else for you. It's like you are creating your own metaverse. And if you want guidance on creating an army of agents that can do virtually anything Thing and you can sell these for you know multiple tens of thousands of dollars and check out my mentorship link below where I will walk you through this entire process within six weeks. So in short, yes, you are destined to create real impact and make real money if you follow these seven steps. Don't hesitate. Start today.